You ever notice when racing online that almost everyone uses Waluigi, usually with Wiggler, Bitty Buggy, or Mr. Scooty? Why exactly is that? Clearly it must be because these are the best builds in the game, but then if you look at the world record time trials, some of them will use builds like Baby Daisy, Bitty Buggy, Rollers, and Paper Glider, and others will use builds like Dry Bowser, Mach 8, Rollers, and Cloud Glider. So does that mean that these builds are also the best? Well, I'm here to break this all down for you. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Basic and I am a math and science oriented guy who spends way too much time playing Mario Kart 8. Today I'm going to break down exactly what makes the best builds, well, the best. Using science! We're going to talk about all the different stats in the game, which ones are the most important, and how to optimize them. Before we get started, I want to just point out quickly that the purpose of this video is not to tell you what to use, but rather to provide a general framework for understanding what makes a build good. As always, if you find the video useful, entertaining, and or informative, liking the video, commenting, and sharing with others is a really good way to let me know, and it also helps out the channel. Also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be informed as soon as a new video drops. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Now it turns out that I'm not the first one to wonder whether we can approach the question of best build scientifically. A guy named Henry Hinefeld wrote an article back in 2018 titled The Best Mario Kart Character According to Data Science Using Build Information for the Wii U Version. He reproduced the analysis for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe shortly thereafter. Now the heart of these analyses revolves around a concept known as Pareto Efficiency or Pareto Optimality. And in order to make any progress in understanding what makes a build good, we first need to understand what these terms mean. Pareto efficiency, or Pareto optimality, is an idea introduced by Italian economist Vilfredo Federico Damaso Pareto, and refers to a situation whereby an individual or preference criterion cannot be made better off without making at least one individual or preference criterion worse off. Now what does this mean exactly in plain English? Well. Suppose that Mario really likes mushrooms, and the more mushrooms he has, the better. And that's all he cares about. Let's also suppose that Wario really likes hoarding coins, and the more coins he has, the better, and he couldn't really care less about mushrooms. If we have 100 mushrooms and 100 coins, and we give 50 of each to both Mario and Wario, this is not a Pareto Optimal configuration. Why? Notice that if we take a coin from Mario and give it to Wario, Mario won't be any worse off since he doesn't care about coins, but Wario will be made extra happy because now he has more coins. So we were able to make Wario better off without making Wario worse off. We can keep repeating this procedure over and over again until Wario has all of Mario's coins. Now is this a Pareto Optimal configuration? For those of you who answered no, you're correct. This is not a Pareto Optimal configuration. That's because if we take all of Wario's mushrooms and give them to Mario, Wario won't be any worse off because he doesn't care about mushrooms, but Mario will be better off. And we have now reached a Pareto Optimal configuration, because any other distribution of coins and mushrooms will either make Mario worse off, or else it'll make Wario worse off. And that's basically it. That's Pareto Optimality in a nutshell. Now let's make the problem slightly more complicated. Suppose that we introduce power stars into the equation, and that Mario and Wario both like Power Stars equally. If we keep the same configuration as before, but give a Power Star to Wario, this will be a Pareto Optimal configuration. That's because if we give Wario's Power Star to Mario, Mario will be made happier, but at the cost of making Wario less well off. This would also be a Pareto Optimal configuration, because the only way to redistribute the resources in such a way that makes Wario happier, namely by giving Wario the Power Star, necessarily makes Mario less happy. So when it comes down to it, Pareto efficiency is basically all about trade-offs. We can sum up the important bits in the following way. Point number one is that if we've got a Pareto optimal configuration of stuff that we care about, we can't get any more of one thing without making some sacrifices. Point number two is that there are multiple ways to get Pareto optimal configurations of stuff, and it's not always obvious which one is the best in some objective sense. Now how can we apply this to Mario Kart? Well, there are 13 different stats in this game. Weight, acceleration, on-road and off-road traction, mini turbo, speed on land, water, anti-grav, and air, 
and handling on land, water, anti-grav, and air. I won't go into all the details on all these stats, but suffice it to say that 99% of the time, the only two stats we really care about are ground speed and mini turbo. Ground speed is important obviously because it affects how fast you can go. Mini turbo is important for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's tied really closely to your acceleration stat, which affects how quickly you can even build up speed in the first place. This is important because having the highest top speed in the universe doesn't matter if you can never get up to top speed. This is even more true online where getting hit by items resets your speed to zero. Mini turbo itself though is also really important because it affects among other things how quickly you can build up mini turbos and how long they last. And this is even more true in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe where mini turbos got a general buff over their Wii U counterparts. Each component of your build, that is the character, cart, tires, and glider, has a different distribution of stats. For example, the Bad Wagon has a ground speed of 5 and a mini turbo of 0. In contrast, Bitty Buggy has a ground speed of 0 and a mini turbo of 7. Now the way the game calculates your stats on the build screen is by taking each component of your build and simply adding all the values together. So if we take an all gold loadout with gold Mario, gold standard cart, gold tires, and gold glider, you'll see that it has a ground speed of 17, an acceleration of 4, a weight of 18, handling of 9, and traction of 3. These raw values are called the levels for ground speed, acceleration, weight, handling, and traction, and are not actually what's displayed on the build screen. At least not directly. The way the game converts the levels into the bars is by adding 3 to the level and then dividing by 4. So, for example, our all gold loadout had a ground speed of 17. If we add 3, we get 20, and then when we divide by 4, we'll get 5 bars of speed. You can check the math on the rest of those for yourselves if you're interested. So now that we understand what the stats are and how each component of the build individually affects the distribution of stats for the build as a whole, let's take a look at how we can use this information to scientifically figure out what the best build in the game is. So, first things first, I went to the Mario Wiki and downloaded all this data by literally just copy and pasting into Excel. One thing to know about this data is that there is a ton of duplicate information in the sense that there are many different characters or carts or tires or gliders that actually share the same stats. For example, Waluigi, Roy, and DK all have the same distribution of stats, as do Biddy Buggy and Mr. Scooty. So the first order of business was to read all this data into a program called R and write some code to combine all the duplicates. This is useful because there are 45 characters, 41 carts, 22 tires, and 15 gliders, which gives a total of 608,850 unique builds. Removing all the duplicates gives just 16 character types, 15 cart types, 9 tire types, and 4 glider types, for a total of 8,064 unique builds. I then used an R package called Shiny to write a piece of software to help visualize all this data. The way the app works is that when you load it up, you pick the two stats you're interested in looking at. Here it defaults to mini turbo and ground speed. The next step is to put in your build. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to look at our all gold loadout of gold Mario, gold cart, gold tires, and gold glider. Scrolling down, we can see a graph that plots the levels of ground speed and mini turbo for every build in the game. It should be pointed out that even though no build in the game shares its exact distribution of all 13 stats with any other build, it's possible for more than one build to have the same ground speed and mini turbo stats. That's why instead of seeing 8064 points on this graph, we only see 138. So let's take a look at our build. If we hover over this point on the graph, we can see that, like before, this build has a mini turbo of 5 and a ground speed of 17. Points on the horizontal and dashed lines have the same mini turbo and ground speed respectively as our build. Every point above the horizontal line has a higher ground speed, and every point to the right of the vertical line has a higher mini turbo. Now what happens when we replace Gold Mario with Roy? This build has a mini turbo stat of 5, which is exactly the same as before, but the ground speed is actually increased by 1. So if ground speed and mini turbo are the only things we care about, then we can see that a build that uses Roy dominates the build that uses Gold Mario, because it essentially allows us to get a free increase in ground speed without having to sacrifice any mini turbo. And this means that our all gold loadout was not a Pareto optimal build. Now suppose that we replace Roy with Dry Bowser and Gold Tires with Slim Tires. Now the ground speed is the same as with the Roy build, 
but the mini turbo is actually increased by one to get a value of six. So again, we were able to get a free increase in mini turbo without having to sacrifice any ground speed. So the Roy build is now dominated by this build and it is not a Pareto optimal build. So again, we were able to get a free increase in mini turbo without having to sacrifice any ground speed. Now we've come to an impasse because there are actually quite a few builds that have the same ground speed or mini turbo stats as this build, but every build that has more mini turbo has lower ground speed. Additionally, every build that has a higher ground speed has lower mini turbo. So what does this all mean? It means that there's no way to get more mini turbo unless we sacrifice some ground speed. And also that there's no way to get more ground speed without sacrificing some mini turbo. And now we've come back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the video, because this build of dry Bowser, gold cart, slim tires, and gold glider is a Pareto optimal build. It's a Pareto optimal build with regards to ground speed and mini turbo because there is no other build in the game that is strictly better than this build stat wise, meaning that every other build is going to have to compromise either on mini turbo or ground speed. Now let's take a look at one of the really common competitive online builds of Waluigi, Wild Wiggler, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider. This build has a ground speed of 11 and mini turbo of 14, and is also a Pareto optimal build. To see why, just take a look at the graph. Every point to the right of the vertical line here is below the horizontal line, meaning that every build with a higher mini turbo stat also has a lower ground speed. This is also true looking in the reverse direction where every build with a higher ground speed also has a lower mini turbo. Like we saw before, there are actually multiple ways to get a Pareto optimal configuration of ground speed and mini turbo. And the only difference between two Pareto optimal configurations is how much they prioritize mini turbo over ground speed. We can actually draw a line connecting all of the Pareto optimal points, and this line is called the Pareto Frontier. Let's take a look at some examples of current world record time trial builds to see if and where they land on the Frontier. First up, on Mario Kart Stadium 150cc, we have Wario, Wild Wiggler, Rollers, and Paper Glider. This build has a mini turbo of 12 and a ground speed of 13, which is pretty similar to the online tryhard build that we looked at earlier. On Big Blue 150cc, we have Wario, Mach 8, Leaf Tires, and Paper Glider, which has a ground speed of 14 and a mini turbo of 11. So kind of the mirror of our online tryhard build in that it prioritizes ground speed more over mini turbo. On the extreme ends of the spectrum, we have the 200cc Moo Moo Meadows record build that uses Wario, Sneaker, Crimson Slim, and Hylian Kite. This build has a whopping 18 ground speed and only six mini turbo, which makes sense since there's only like four turns on the whole course. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have the Cheeseland 150cc record build, which uses Baby Daisy, Bitty Buggy, Rollers, and Cloud Glider. This build has zero ground speed and 20 mini turbo, which again makes sense because there's basically never a time where you're not drifting. So, as we've seen, there are a variety of different Pareto Optimal builds that have been used to achieve world records in this game, and ultimately the answer to the question, what is the best build in the game, is unfortunately that it depends on the track. Looking in aggregate across all 48 tracks in the game, the most solid all-around build for 150cc is either going to be the Waluigi, Wiggler, Roller, Paper Glider build that we saw before, or the same build but replacing Wiggler with Bitty Buggy or Scooty for a slightly lighter and more mini turbo friendly build. For 200cc, the Waluigi, Scooty, Roller, Paper Glider build is a pretty good go-to build. You can also use Linker Yoshi instead, which will both be slightly safer due to having better handling. All that being said, Ultimately, when it comes down to it, focusing on the optimality of your build is not really that important except for the very highest level of gameplay. And even there, it's not going to make or break what you're doing because your skill at the game is going to heavily outweigh how good your build is. As an example, a few months ago I had a Division 6 MKU player show up in my stream one time and jokingly told him to use Baby Luigi, Koopa Clown, Monster Tires, and Gold Glider, which statistically is one of the most mediocre builds in the entire game. This dude absolutely dominated me and my viewers in every race, and it wasn't even close. So yeah, I'm not trying to tell you how to play the game or what to use, because ultimately, getting better at the game and having fun is going to be way more important. But hopefully you've got some more insight into why exactly these competitive builds are so competitive and why they're so popular online. And that's going to be all for me for today, guys. If you found the video entertaining or informative, don't forget to like and comment to let me know. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video, and as always, I will see you in the next one.